In the last video, we defined the properties of a vector space. In this video, we're going to be looking at a specific kind of vector space known as a Hilbert space. What a Hilbert space is, is it's a special kind of vector space. It has all the properties that a regular vector space has, and it has a few more additional properties also. One of these additional properties is that a Hilbert space, in addition to the vector addition and the scalar multiplication operation, it also has an inner product operation. What do I mean by inner product? An inner product is an operation that takes two vectors and spits out a scalar. Now, for a vector space like a Hilbert space to have a valid inner product, we need this operation to obey certain constraints. One of these is conjugate symmetry. What this means is that the inner product of two elements in the Hilbert space is the complex conjugate of the inner product of the two elements, but now in the opposite order. So the inner product isn't commutative, but it's conjugate symmetric. The other property is linearity with respect to the second vector. So if I'm taking the inner product between psi1 and a second vector that includes the scalars a and b, a and b come out unchanged in the resulting inner product. However, if the scalars a and b appear in the first vector, we have to take the complex conjugates of those scalars when we pull them out of the inner product. In addition, the inner product of a vector with itself must not be negative and is only zero when the vector itself is zero. This is also known as positive definiteness. Finally, how close two vectors are in Hilbert space is defined according to the distance formula, which is expressed in terms of the inner product. Now this closeness relation or distance formula comes in handy for a later property, which we'll get to soon. Hilbert spaces are also separable, which means they contain a countable dense subset. These are some pretty hardcore math terms, but I'll try to explain them informally to give you an intuition. For example, the set of real numbers is separable because its countable dense subset is the set of rational numbers Q. Q is countable because it consists of all numbers that can be expressed as ratios between two integers. Since integers are countable, 1, 2, 3, 4, it follows that their ratios are also countable. I'll have to count to infinity to count all rational numbers, but I can still count them because they're ratios of two integers. This is in contrast to irrational numbers, which can't be expressed in terms of integers and are uncountable. The set of rational numbers Q is also a dense subset because any real number is either a rational number or we can make a real number arbitrarily close to a rational number. Even irrational numbers like pi can be written as a sequence of rational numbers of increasing precision, like 3.1, 3.14, 3.142, 3 and so on. Within this sequence, I can find a member that's as close to the actual value of pi as I want, and all of these members are rational numbers because they're expressed in terms of decimals that end at a certain point and don't continue to infinity. Now, because the set of rational numbers is a subset of the set of real numbers, and because it's countable and dense, we say that the set of real numbers is separable. Because the set of real numbers is separable, we can consider the set of real numbers to be a Hilbert space, because in addition to being separable, it's also a vector space, and it also has that inner product operation that you probably know as the dot product. For a general Hilbert space, however, a countable subset S containing the vectors phi n means that I can count the number of elements in that subset, while a dense subset is one so that every element in the Hilbert space is either a member of that subset S or can be made arbitrarily close to one, where closeness is determined according to this distance formula I mentioned above. It should be noted that the property of separability isn't always used in the definition of Hilbert spaces. Instead, it's occasionally assumed that a Hilbert space is separable. But some books mention separability as a specific property of Hilbert spaces. The last property of Hilbert spaces is that they're complete. Informally, this means that there aren't any gaps. Formally, this means that every Cauchy sequence, or a sequence in which two members of the sequence get arbitrarily close to each other as we go further down the sequence, Every Cauchy sequence converges to an element phi in the Hilbert space. For example, the set of rational numbers is incomplete since there are gaps between the rational numbers that are occupied by irrational numbers. However, the set of real numbers, which consists of both rational and irrational numbers, is complete because it has no gaps. 
So in the end, a Hilbert space is a set which satisfies all four of these properties, being a linear vector space, having a valid inner product, being separable, and being complete. Anyway, that does it for this video. In the next video, we're going to talk about some types of Hilbert spaces, specifically the ones we care about in quantum mechanics.